Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Modern naval vessels are among the largest and most sophisticated boats ever to sail. In many cases, they also cost billions of dollars. But despite how advanced these various ships have become, they are nonetheless weapons of war. As a result, they carry thousands of pounds of bombs, missiles, In the case of aircraft carriers, there are also vast supplies of jet fuel and up to 75 aircraft on board at any given time. But while an enemy attack might seem like the most likely worry, a fire breaking out on board could potentially be far more devastating. First, the presence of so many flammable and explosive material on board pose a problem when it comes to fighting the fire. Second, the average naval ship could be hundreds of miles away from assistance or a friendly port at any given time. With no other boats in the area, the crew has to fight any fires on their own. On board a U.S. Navy vessel, every crew member receives firefighting training. Though there are specific men and women assigned to lead the crew if a fire were to break out, it's essential that everyone be able to take action and put out the fire as quickly as possible. Fighting a fire means using hoses and other suppressant devices to contain the blaze and keep it from spreading. To do this properly, crew members must work as a team and coordinate their efforts as best as possible. In fact, a big part of any fire drill is practicing these sorts of coordinated movements. Drills for such an event involve every member of the flight deck crew, regardless of their assigned job. This training paid off in 2011, when an F-18 performing a touch-and-go caught on fire. Before the aircraft could get back on the flight deck, the crew members of the USS Carl Vinson were already preparing to deal with a potential fire. Within seconds, they had covered the F-18 in fire suppressant foam putting out the fire, saving the plane, most importantly, saving the pilot. Fortunately, not all shipboard fires require the fast action of the crew. Naval systems worldwide also have several automated systems designed to reduce the potential for a fire to spread. Among the most notable of these is a fire suppression foam system.
These are generally installed in the ship's hangar, where they can rain down thousands of gallons of foam in just a few seconds. Crew members can also tie into the foam system to assist in the automated process. Aircraft carrier flight decks also have a countermeasure washdown system, which is essentially a giant sprinkler system with nozzles located all over the ship. Not only can this be activated in the event of a fire, but also a chemical attack or fuel spill. One of the most well-known and highly publicized fires involving a Navy ship was the blaze aboard the USS Bonhomme Richard. First commissioned in 1998, this WASP-class amphibious assault ship played a very important role in the U.S. Navy. It not only carried a crew of around 1,100, but it also transported nearly 2,000 Marines, landing craft, and aircraft to combat zones all around the world. Though smaller than an aircraft carrier, the Bonhomme Richard measured 844 feet in length and weighed around 40,000 tons. Though it served without incident for years, it only took one serious fire to force the vessel out of service. In the early morning of July 12, 2020, an explosion occurred aboard the USS Bonhomme Richard while it was docked at its home port in San Diego, California. The ship was undergoing repairs, and thankfully, much of the ship's crew was not on board at the time. Unfortunately, this also meant that the ship's onboard fire suppression systems were all turned off for maintenance. Reports indicate that the blaze was fueled by paper, cloth, and rags rather than fuel or other hazardous materials and started in a vehicle storage area. As soon as the fire was discovered, firefighters on land, sea, and air immediately began working to save the ship. This included filling dozens of firefighting oxygen tanks so crews could board the vessel without succumbing to the toxic smoke. The explosion did injure 17 crew members and four civilians, but most were released from the hospital. However, Around 50 more people were injured during the course of fighting the fire, mostly due to heat exhaustion and smoke inhalation. Special firefighting boats surrounded the ship for hours at a time, spraying seawater onto the fire at various levels. Those with the hardest job were the firefighters who actually had to go on board and search for the fires, despite the immense amount of heat and smoke.
In total, it took five days of round-the-clock fighting to extinguish the blaze entirely. Damage reports indicated that the ship sustained damage on 11 of its 14 decks, many of which had collapsed or warped due to the extreme heat. The Benome Richard fire resulted in the loss of a ship valued at more than $2 billion. Had it occurred at sea rather than in port, it could have led to a significant loss of life. Though the U.S. military has always prioritized firefighting training, this particular incident forced ships and their crews to reconsider their efforts. Firefighters, also known as damage controlmen, train with real fires and real equipment so that they can better understand how to deal with situations on board a ship. This includes practicing hose handling procedures, firefighting maneuvers, teamwork, and nozzle man relieving procedures. Most parts of a naval ship's decks are made of metal and very cramped, which can cause problems for the men and women engaged with the fire. Therefore, teamwork is extremely important. Speed, however, is just as essential. Damage control men need to be able to suit up and address a blaze within minutes of it being announced. These sailors are assigned to the RFS Admiral Chabonenko from Russia and HMS Dauntless from the United Kingdom. They are participating in an invitational exercise known as Fruckus at the Farrier Firefighting Facility at Naval Station, Norfolk, Virginia. They are learning the basics of fighting fires, including how to use equipment like nozzles and hoses properly. Fire hoses are capable of putting out a lot of pressurized water or foam and have adjustable nozzles so that operators can change the stream. One of the most important parts of this process involves relieving the nozzle man and replacing them with someone else from the hose team. As the nozzle man is closest to the fire, they are susceptible to injury from heat if they stay in place for too long. In the end, the only thing that can protect the ship and the crew from a catastrophic fire is quick response times and proper training. The men and women who serve in the navies of the world are well aware of this, and they take their duties as firefighters very seriously, both for themselves and their shipmates.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.